We have a wonderful program for you tonight, but first it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage the chair of the Clergy Health and Retirement Trust, Mr. John Canem, a founding member of the Archdiocese's first finance council in 1984 until he retired as vice chair. John's influential leadership has been a tremendous asset to the Archbishop and the Archdiocese of Boston. Over the past year, he and his wife Ginny have worked tirelessly as co-chairs to make this evening's event possible. We're deeply grateful for their wisdom, their creativity, and time-honored com commitment to caring for Boston's priests. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. John Cater. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Father Bob. And um, I have some good news for you to start with. Um, the usual program here calls for a few words from the dinner chair and a few words from the chair of the board. Uh, actually, this year, since I fill both roles, <laughs> you're going to be spared people talking to you. And uh, we have a really meaty program after dinner, so uh, bear with me. Um, I'm going to start off by thanking the people who have decorated this cavernous space. Uh, it, it is transformed. It's beautiful. It's soft. It's powerful. Thank you. And, and I know there are people in the Office of Catholic Development that have done this. One particular person whose name is escaping me at the moment, forgive me. I hope you will forgive me. Um, also, the people who have prepared and will serve this, but I hope is a very good meal. I'm confident it will be a good meal. Um, I am not going to get into the matter of financial support for the trust um, because Father Bob uh, did what he needed to do. But I, I'm going to fill out what I think should be filled out from his acknowledgement of one source of support. Um, one of the entities he called out was the Flatley Foundation. Um, if, if we can think, and I do think, of important donors, sustaining donors, as being critical to our success, and I do, if, if they are pillars, the Flatley family is the foundation itself, and they have been from the beginning. In fact, it is only tonight when anyone from this podium has been permitted to acknowledge their support. Um, I'm under strict orders not to get into numbers. Um, but as I said, uh, if other people are the pillars, this is the foundation of the very building that is of clergy trust. Um, if, if I were to get more specific, uh, I'd get in trouble with the Flatleys. And frankly, the Flatley that I'd be most afraid of is a man who passed away a while back, Thomas J. Flatley, my friend. and I did various things together. Uh, he was, to say, a successful real estate investor operator is a total understatement, but um, I will say and quote to you one thing he said to me that has always stuck with me, and I don't remember exactly when he said it or in what context one of our conversations. Um, he said, 
you know, John, the only real job I have is to get to heaven and take as many people as I can with me. Uh, I've thought of that often. I am confident he was successful in the first endeavor. And I'm concerned that he's watching me tonight. <laughs> but it, it, it's a beautiful thought, and uh, the fortune he made is, is, is very important to the fund. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Flatley family. Of, of donors is, is important, and that's been done. Um, it's also important to acknowledge people on staff who have been directly involved, and frankly, as I look out at this, at this huge gathering, and I am about to announce the number of, the, of dollars that we've achieved, I, I want to thank staff that had an important part in this. And I'll start out with Joe Dorigo, who is the, <laughs> as many of you know, is the chief executive officer of the fund and of the trust. Kathleen Driscoll, who heads up fundraising for the Archdiocese as a whole. Mary Dorley, who is ably an assistance of her in every day of the year. And Katie Wood, who was the quarterback of, of running the committee this year. So thank you all. And one last person who is not on staff regularly, but who is absolutely a genius at organizing events of this sort, organizing campaigns of this sort, and who stayed on top of this committee every week, Carol McKean. <laughs> Many of you know what the fund and the trust do, but some don't, so just give me a moment with this. Clergy Health Retirement Trust oversees and manages the health care program for all priests in the archdiocese, active and retired. It also oversees and manages the endowment that funds clergy retirement. So priests that are entitled to retirement look to us to manage their money well and to dispense it to them as they are entitled. And lastly, the trust owns and operates Regina Cleary, which to many of you is a very well known entity, but for those who it is not, it is a first class hotel. Um, hard by the two pillars that support it, St. Joseph's Church on the spiritual side and Massachusetts General Hospital on the medical side. I mean, literally, physically, it's right there. Uh, Steve Gust uh, runs a great hotel there. Um, it has a waiting list, so you can, I could talk all night about how great it is, but the, the real uh, affirmation of that, it, we have a waiting list. Um, if, if there's something to worry about, it's that the guests don't pay a rate that uh, allows us to make a lot of money. In fact, we lose a lot of money operating it, but that's why we're in business. So, the mission of the trust is health care and the financial security of all of our priests, active and retired. 
and we're succeeding. In the past five years, we have reduced the cost of medical care for all priests in the archdiocese by at least $3 million. During that time, we have provided what I think is even better care. And I'll get into that in a moment. On the pension side, last fiscal year of the Archdiocese, which is ends on June 30th, we paid out approximately $4 million in pension to priests. So the financial security of every priest in this room, and those who are not here, whatever your age, uh, we have the ball and we're going to hold on to it and we're going to make sure your retirement is secure and with excellent management from Joe DeRigo and his, as I always say, really good but small staff, we're going to get you really good health care at a reasonable cost. I'm going to wind up by talking a little bit more about health care in, in a rather general way. Um, yeah, we administer a large program. Um, and we contract with, with Tufts uh, to run it. But we increasingly regard our mission as more than getting it done efficiently at the lowest possible cost. We're really providing now care from primary physician relationships, which we encourage all of our priests to have, to mental health, or major surgery, the whole spectrum. Our view is that a healthy priest is more likely to be a happy priest. And a happy priest is very much more likely to be an effective priest. And looking at it, as I can't help but do it from a business point of view, that means that you and I are investing here tonight in a winning operation for ourselves as well as the church. We need happy, healthy, effective priests. Sure, we owe them good health care. We owe them a secure retirement. But we also need them. And this trust is very much about providing that whole spectrum of care. Last thing I'm supposed to do, uh, and I follow Kathleen Driscoll's orders almost to the T, is to tell you that next year's chair is a man whose name I, I doubt is unfamiliar to anybody here. Um, he is my favorite banker, uh, and he is chairman and CEO of a bank that you all know, the Bank of America. Brian Moynihan. 